Welcome to our second recorded structured advising workshop. This workshop will be focused on the key insights portion of the ePortfolio. Where we'll start today is with our content guide, our guiding document for the ePortfolio process. You can find this document on our website, but if you remember from our overview video, this is really all of the information that you need to be successful in the ePortfolio. So just an overview, again, a refresher. There are three sections of the GLD ePortfolio. The first one is an about me section, which you, as you can see on the screen is designed to give you space to introduce yourself, to talk about your GLD pathway, your major, your professional goals after graduation, and a sneak preview of your ePortfolio. The major chunk of your ePortfolio is the key insights essays. And we actually recommend that you write these first partly because there are three key insights essays. So it's the most content that you'll have to write in the ePortfolio, but also it is just the most difficult. And um, this is a challenging reflective process and it takes time to really dig deep. So we recommend you start here before writing any other content for your ePortfolio. The last section is the leadership section of the ePortfolio and our next video will be focused on that. So I'm gonna scroll through to page four to talk about the key insights and what they are. Uh, a key insight is an essay where you will identify and analyze learning that has been transformative to you. In a key insight essay, it's grounded in your academic study and talks about how you have um, taken your academic work and how that has informed your experiences that you've participated in beyond the classroom and used those things to enrich your education. In a key insight essay, we want you to connect that within the classroom experience to your beyond the classroom experience and explain how that connection has impacted you and why that connection is important. It should show your in-depth learning and critical thinking and demonstrate the significance of those things and how you have been transformed or seen a, a change in your behavior or perspective as a result. There are several elements on the rubric tied to the key insights. If you remember from our overview video, half of the points on the ePortfolio rubric come from the ePortfolio key insights. And some of the hardest points to get are right here in this major um, middle section right here. So we want you in a key insight essay to describe three lessons. Um, in each key insight essay, you will describe one lesson, but three lessons total that are related to your field of study or your coursework or other experiences. And we want you to think about how it has been similar or different to what you've experienced within and beyond the classroom. What different perspectives can you bring in to say, what, what is the context? What are the factors that influenced these experiences and my learning through them? What if it had been different? What if I hadn't gone on that study abroad trip? Or what if I went to a different location and a different culture? What if I hadn't done that internship or peer leadership experience? How would my perspective or my behavior be different as a result? We want you to make those complex connections and think critically about how your experiences have transformed you and maybe how they would have been different if you had done it differently. And think through those things to really get the points on the rubric that are associated with this complex connection piece. So I'm gonna scroll down to our activity to really think through the key insights and how to write them. If you go to the appendix, there are instructions here for our key insight matching activity. And what I'll encourage you to do is as I give the instructions, pause this video, write out your ideas, and then press play to continue to the next step. You can always refer back to the content guide and read through the instructions as well. So in the matching activity, um, Appendix A, but we have the worksheet right here on the next page, you want to make connections between your within the classroom and beyond the classroom experiences. But the first step is to really brainstorm all of the things that you've done during your time at Carolina, both the courses that have been meaningful to you and the experiences. So step one is to look at the within the classroom side, the left side of your matching activity. And what you wanna do is list out three to four, maybe more courses that have been particularly meaningful to you during your time. 
Maybe they stood out because you learned a lot in that course, or maybe it was a light bulb moment for your career path. Maybe you were just really fascinated by an idea that you learned in that course. Write out those things that have been meaningful for you, either from your major or from your Carolina core experiences. And then on the right side of that, right next to the course, write out that major idea that came from that course. Maybe there's multiple, but write out like the example, Psych 101 and Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that major concept or theory or framework that came from that course. We'll use that again later. So pause here, take a few minutes and write out at least three or four courses that have been meaningful to you. All right, step two is to move to the right side of the matching activity and look at the beyond the classroom experiences. Typically, this is the easier side for students to complete. On this side, we'll do the same thing. Think about three or four or maybe more experiences outside of your classroom requirements that have been meaningful to you. What did you do? What things did you participate in, either as ongoing um, participation or one-time events that you participated in? What did you do that stood out to you that made a difference in your career or in your personal development? What are those things that when you look back, you can say, wow, I am so glad that I did that, or I learned a lot from that experience. Write out those things now. All right, now that you have both within and beyond the classroom experiences, we want to make some connections. This is the matching part of the matching activity. So if you have a hard copy of this activity and you are writing things out by hand, this is a great time to get a colored pencil or a marker and draw some lines from the left side to the right side or from the right side to the left side of where you saw those things connect. If you are doing this digitally, you can do the same thing by inserting a line on the document and making that connection between your courses and beyond the classroom experiences. What you want to do is think about how you saw those things play out in real life in a similar or different way. So maybe, for example, you had your Psych 101 class and you learned about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And then on the right side, one of your meaningful experiences was volunteering at a soup kitchen. You might draw a line between those two experiences because for you, that was the first time that you saw Maslow's hierarchy of needs in action, when you saw people getting their basic needs met, food and shelter. So you can make a connection there because you saw Maslow's hierarchy of needs play out for you in your beyond the classroom experience. Maybe you took an economics course and learned about supply and demand, but you did an internship the summer before, and that's one of your beyond the classroom experiences. You can make a connection from your internship back to that supply and demand course that you eventually took later, because maybe you saw your internship um, talking about supply and demand in a different way. Maybe they didn't use those terms, but when you took the course and you learned those, those phrases, you knew what that meant and you made the connection back to your internship. So make those kinds of, of connections, those matches. And you wanna have at least three to four matches at the end of this. Um, so look back and see what connections you can make. You can pause this video again and take some time to think through your experiences. Know that you can have multiple matches to one experience or back to one course. They can connect however you see fit. It is totally up to you and, and how you make meaning of this experience. So pause here and make some matches and then we'll come back for the next step. All right, so now that you have some matches, I'm gonna just scroll back to the next piece of this, back on the key insight page outside of the appendix in our regular content guide. Okay. So once you have made connections between your experiences within and beyond the classroom, what you wanna do is start to dive deeper and probe yourself to think, what is the meaning of this connection? What did I learn or how was I transformed through that connection? And you can do that by asking yourself some of these questions in the content guide. So you can describe the experiences. What happened in that course? What did I learn? What happened in that beyond the classroom experience? How did I feel while I was doing it? 
What were my reactions to that experience as it was happening or after the fact? What did I or my group accomplish during that experience? And then you can think more, more critically, more deeply in the examine category. Why did we do this? What was the point of me participating in this activity? How might this experience have been different in another context, either in another location or in another field or major in a different time or, or experience altogether? Think about those things through different lenses to get to that complex connection piece that the rubric is asking you for. Think about what questions did your courses or your experiences raise for you as a student in your major, in your field. Do you have more questions as a result of taking a course or participating in an activity? Do you feel affirmed through those things? Talk about that. And then think about the takeaway. What did you learn? What did you see through that light bulb moment or that connection or the takeaway? What did you learn about yourself or the world around you through that process? And that's when you'll articulate your learning. And that's where the key insight major learning statement comes in, a key insight essay. What are you gonna do with this knowledge? How will your experience change things for you? What is the impact moving forward? And if you can articulate those statements, you're really hitting at the essence of a key insight to acknowledge how you've grown or how you've been transformed through those experiences and through that connection that you've made. So those are the types of things that you'll want to ask yourself. We have more questions that you can think through on our website in our reflection resources toolbox. Feel free to look there as well. This also can serve as a nice outline for you as you're drafting your key insight essays. Once you take your connections and pick one of those connections to become a key insight essay, this is a nice um, template that you can use, a framework that can model out your essay for you. You don't have to do it in exactly this way, but it does serve as a nice starting point to reference from. The last piece of the key insight essay is artifacts. And artifacts are things that are created by you that demonstrate evidence of your learning. And for the GLD ePortfolio, we require two artifacts per key insight. There are three key insights total, two artifacts each. That's six total artifacts required. One from beyond the classroom, one from within the classroom for each key insight. So we have some examples here that you can see on the screen in the content guide. Um, we want them to, again to be created by you or developed throughout your college career, not just something that a professor gave to you or a mentor gave to you, but, but something that you have contributed to or created. So for within the classroom, you might choose a paper or an assignment or a presentation that you gave. For beyond the classroom, you might choose meeting minutes or an event plan that you created um, or that you worked with a team to create. Maybe you have a website or a program that you put on that can serve as your beyond the classroom artifact um, to really supplement and document what you're talking about in the essay. I mean, that connection that you made. We're looking for evidence of what you're saying in your key insights. And that can be creative. So maybe you have performance reviews by a supervisor from your internship, and maybe you wrote a reaction um, blog or a journal post right after that to really give your reaction to what your supervisor told you and what feedback they gave you. That would make a great artifact to demonstrate what learning you had in that moment and what you were feeling during that time. You can also use photos of your work either for within the classroom, like pictures of your notes or study guides, um, or pictures beyond the classroom, like you participating in research, um, you actively engaging in research. One thing that we do note in the content guide is to be careful with the photos that you choose. While pictures can, can certainly help the looks of your ePortfolio, they don't necessarily communicate learning very well. If you have a touristy photo, like a, a posed photo of, of you in front of the Eiffel Tower, for example, while that might be a great image to include as part of your ePortfolio, it doesn't necessarily show evidence of a learning moment. So you would wanna choose a more candid photo, a more active photo that demonstrates you engaging in learning in some way or how, somehow documenting the learning that was happening while you're talking about it in your essay. So be careful about photos. They're not off limits, but just be intentional about how you use them. 
We also have some notes on redactions. If you did um, an experience that had confidential information or you signed a non-disclosure agreement, for example, and you are not able to use full documents as artifacts, you can certainly redact information um, to make it shareable for public use. So you can redact student information and student name or, or client or patient information from documents. You can even recreate an artifact um, that does not have that confidential information saved within it. And that way you're getting to the essence of the document that you wanted to share as evidence of your learning without violating any policies or rules. So feel free to do that. And our advisors are happy to answer questions if you have them. The last piece I'll let you look back at later, um, but these are just examples of how to include your artifacts on your website. There are several examples of how to do that. Some are embedded, some are hyperlinked, some are in the bottom of the text with um, captions at the bottom. Feel free to do it however you see fit within your website as you start to design it, but know that artifacts are important and don't forget about them as you're crafting your key insights. That is all that we have for key insights. The next piece of this will be our leadership workshop. So stay tuned or tune into the next video to get more information on that.